In the cold, lonely, dark of night, she cries out, her voice unwavering, crying for the truth to be heard. Years of mournful silence have kept her from resting, her soul bound to the earthly plane. She longs to be free, to journey on. Hear her cries, hear the truth, free her soul. Lies are like thieves that lurk in the dark, waiting to catch you off guard. And when they are exposed, much havoc do they wreak in an attempt to steal your soul. Hear her voice as she cries out. Justice is what she needs. Hear her cries, hear the truth, free her soul. She cries for the non-believers whose arrogance belies their intent. And to the faceless defenders of the truth, she sings an honor song. Hear her voice as she cries out. Justice is what she needs. Hear her cries, hear the truth, free her soul. Too long had the lies clouded her journey. Too long had the guilty gone free. For all those who have enabled this, who knows what your karma will be. Anime, don't cry no more. The truth has been heard. Justice will be served. Your soul is free to soar. The American Indian Movement started in 1968 in response to the police discrimination on the streets of Minneapolis, St. Paul. An organization started to deal with local issues soon became nationwide. The American Indian Movement brought voice to the concerns of indigenous people across the nation. AIM staged protests across the nation to call attention to concerns of indigenous people. In November 1972, the American Indian Movement brought national attention to the plight of Indian people through their occupation of the Bureau of Indian Affairs building in Washington, D.C. The occupation brought widespread attention to the treatment of Native peoples throughout American history. It also brought Native activism to the attention of the nation through the publicity of the media. Protesters occupied the BIA building for six days before agreeing to leave in exchange for no prosecution of protesters and an open dialogue and the points of the concern. After the occupation of the BIA building, AIM turned their attention to the troubles on the Pine Ridge Reservation. In February 1973, AIM arrived at Wounded Knee to protest the corrupt tribal government and to draw attention to the large numbers of unsolved murders on the reservation. Native people from all around the country came to Wounded Knee to support the occupation. The siege at Wounded Knee lasted 71 days with two people being killed, 12 wounded, and over 1,200 arrests occurring when it ended. Although AIM was involved in many other protests, these two events brought them to national attention. The co-founders of this organization, Russell Means and Dennis Banks, still receive national attention today. Much has been written about both of these leaders. However, one very important side of AIM's history has yet to be told. This is a story of Kamuk Nichols, ex-wife of Dennis Banks, who in my eyes is an unsung hero, a bearer of truth. While her story is rooted deep in AIM's history, it has been only in the past few years that her voice has been heard. After more than 25 years of investigation into the murder of Annie Mae Piktu Aquash, a former AIM activist and friend of Kamuk's, Annie Mae's killer was finally brought to justice. Kamuk, one of the previously unnamed sources, came forward to assist the FBI in, in helping to convict Annie Mae's killer. This amazing mother, grandmother, friend, and former AIM activist risked her life for the truth to be known. In assisting the FBI, she had to turn her back on the very people that were once her friends, her family, her colleagues, the very people ingrained in the same fight that she once had fought. She met with certain individuals that the FBI knew had the information they needed, knowing she still considered them her friends. During those meetings, she gained pieces of truth needed to put the whole puzzle together. After all the information had been gathered, the trial of Arla Looking Kalau took place on February 2004. There, Kamuk testified as a star witness for the prosecution. Once the trial started, there was no denying the part she played in helping the FBI. During the trial itself, a very important piece of information came out regarding another former AIM member. Kamuk testified that Leonard Peltier, who had become a symbol of injustice in Native history, 
admitted to her that he did in fact kill the two FBI agents for which he was convicted. This news angered many people and caused a major uproar in Native communities across the nation. The news that Leonard Peltier had killed FBI agents would be devastating to many people across Indian country. Leonard Peltier's case has long been a cause for many people, Native and non-Native. He has in many ways stood for the injustice of the federal government towards Native people. Many people have rallied to his cause. His story is taught in many university courses on Indian history, and I personally have taught this story and cause in my own courses at the university and to middle school students. To find that this symbol of injustice to Native people is fraud would be devastating to many. I haven't heard it again today that I'd heard that, but there was a witness that did say that Leonard Peltier did it, and I dismissed it. You know, they're saying, well, they're an agent of the FBI or they're um, working with the government or something like that, but to hear it, from someone who's a close personal friend who they would have no reason to lie for, for me, validates a statement that you could have easily dismissed with the slander campaign that they've had against um, this person. And even in reading the transcripts of the trial, they did try to discredit her, saying she was testifying for funds, that she um, was trying to get back at Dennis Banks, that she had um, a vendetta against AIM. But when I heard the story today, it's like, you don't even know what to say. It's a shock. It's a. I told him. I said I, I felt like I wanted to cry. You know, we teach it in our courses. I've taught it. You know, what does that mean to us? And it's like a myth that's gone on for so long that people couldn't discredit it because it's gone on for so long. It's meant something to so many people. But for me now, as my personal belief, knowing that it was to told to a personal friend in a time of need a time of needing to share and to get support that it's it's something very devastating to me and you know I, talking to my friends and many of them are university professors that this is the news that I'll share with them to me that it's validated for me and that's something very sad very sad for the whole native for all native people and all the people who supported the cause something very, very devastating. Kamoko is viewed as a sellout, and many, many people have tried to discredit her. With her safety in jeopardy, she went into seclusion and walked away from a very lucrative job as a casting agent in the movie industry. When asked why she decided to come forward, knowing what the repercussions would be, Kamoko replied, because it was the right thing to do. I heard the angels sing, their voices crystal clear, uncovering years of lies and deception. A piper played their tune, shrouded in mystery, she is cloaked in darkness, a heavy burden she carries. But like a soldier, she trudges on, never faltering, for it is truth she brings, allowing the angels to sing a tune so sweet. A woven basket she holds close to her heart, gathering memories, like stars she pulls from the sky gently placing them in her basket. A blanket of sticks and stones and broken bones will cover her naked soul. The sacrifice of a soul is the price of truth, and their voices will be heard above all others. Death, reality's illusion. To those that make it back to live and fight the struggles of their people. To those that give up and those who do not care. To those who fall for the lies and join the dividing lines that keep us fighting amongst each other. To the leaders and prisoners of war, politics, crime, race, and religion, innocent or guilty. To the young, the old, the living, and the dead. To our brothers and sisters and all living things across Mother Earth and her beauty we destroyed and denied the honor that the Creator has given each individual. The truth that lies in our hearts, all my relations.